Hello and welcome to Tutorials. I'm with Matt who's doing a special Boujou tutorial for us today. So let's hand over to Matt. Hello. Hello nice people. Okay, look at that title plate. Boujou, Fruity Matt. After Effects. All of that software. Okay, here we are in Boujou. Look at it. Look at it, it's all scary. Yeah. So, this is what we're going to be tracking. I just filmed a card on the ground and moved around. Now when you're filming it, don't deliberately try and make it jumpy and stuff. And think that Bougie can handle it, because it most likely can't. Try and make it as smooth as possible. So we're going to import it. Make sure it's an MOV file or a sequence file. Uh, let's find it. Where am I? Users. Why is my username user? Stock footage. Where is it? That one. <coughs> and there's a preview. If it's interlaced, just do that. Don't know why. And then just click OK. Now I like to edit the camera, make sure it's the same frame rate, which is 24 frames a second. And then click Track Features. Ignore all of this stuff. You won't really need it much. Just click Start. And look at that. All of those red dots. Now we're going to leave this to track. All of that. And there we go, it's tracked. The magic of editing. Processing. It doesn't really save it, so I'll just save it again. Tut. Okay, so as you can see, that's been tracked. Now I'm going to zoom in on that card there and select a few of the corner points on that card for and turn them to gold by right clicking on them. So I'm going to right click on it, right click on it click gold that basically tells the camera that it's a good point to track so I'm gonna maybe do a few more maybe look at all of those dots um, we don't need to do that yet I'm gonna yeah just choose a few more points to turn to gold as you can see they if they stay gold all the way through that means they're awesome yeah so gold, gold, pink I mean gold. That's gold as well. It's getting all the corner points on it. Okay. They look all gold right now. Good. Let's make that one gold maybe? No. So now we're gonna zoom out and click camera solve. And then click optimize whatever that says. Okay, that's going to solve it. Let's solve a free move. While you're waiting for this, you can get yourself a cake, maybe. Solve a Rubik's Cube. Anything like that. Almost done. Almost done. I wonder where the Rubik's Cube is now. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, it's done. Yeah. Look at that. Look at all those points. Okay, now you've got lots of blobs and circles and stuff. And now if you play that, you can see it's tracked it. There, look at that. They, s they follow the card. So now, I'm going to go to 3D Tasks, Solve Tools... I think no. Where is it? What do we need to find? Uh, no, can't be that. Where is it? There, oh, there it is. Lens distortion. Click assess radial and accept and adjust. Don't ask why. Just do it. Apparently, it helps. So that's done it. And now we go to 3D tasks again. Adjust solve and then. Tick both of them just for good measure, just to make sure. So it'll just solve that. If it takes longer for you, you can solve a Rubik's Cube. Maybe underwater. Oh, that's done. So, oh, almost. You want to load now? There we go, okay. Now, don't ask why we did all that. That just makes the points go a whole lot smoother. Okay, so now we go to field structure, and then that gets rid of the bad points. Obviously, quite a lot of them. So now we have only good points. Let's 
Ooh, let's delete those blue ones. Where are they? There they are. Okay. Delete, delete, delete. There we go. I think that's all of it. Okay, so now we go to export camera solve. Let's find a place to save it. Let's go for my desktop. Tut. What a great name. And then 3ds Max. You have to make sure it's 3D. Oh, whatever software you're using. Actually, we forgot to do something. You have to click on two points by clicking Control G. No, Control. Then you click Control G. Click that button and then make it an X axis. Yeah, and then connect. Then select two other points. And then add coordinate from hint and Y axis, not Z. Y. Because 3ds Max has some inverted axis system thing. Don't know. I don't know why. And then we just select one more, turn it into the origin. That'll be the middle of your scene. And then update core frame, whatever that says. Export camera solve. <gasps> 3ds Max. Um, and also, if you're working in 3ds Max, you have to scale your scene up by 10 or something like that. Save it. There you go. So now all of these dots will now be in a script file to import into 3ds Max which should magically appear right now. Oh! That was good. There it is. So, you got a max script, run script, and then you find it. There we are. S open or save. Uh, there, There's the points. And you have to go to perspective, cameras, camera one, because they will make a camera, and then if you play it, look at that. Look at that. Just awesome. Doesn't matter, there's nothing there. That just looks awesome. Like this Rubik's Cube. Okay. We're gonna get the viewport background up by pressing Alt B and click display background and there's the background. Look at it. You can also cycle through it like that by pressing that weird pointy arrow thing key next to the full on the full stop one. And you can also add an environment map by going to that bitmap. Um Yes that bitmap. And then you find the image sequence has to be an image sequence there it is sequence always check the sequence open okay almost dropped the Rubik's Cube and that's an image sequence so when you render it you'll see it yeah okay let's put some stuff here so let's make a box I've got my Rubik's Cube taken away from me you make a box let's hide that card and look at that play that yeah yeah look at that that's what I filmed yeah if we render that, looks a bit boring. So, right click on it, object properties, image mo image mo motion blur, and go to renderer. And that's one. Make sure they're ticked, otherwise it won't render motion blur. So you do that, and then it renders the motion blur. While you wait, waiting, have a cake or solve a Rubik's cube. There you go. It's motion blurry. Makes it even more cooler. So now we're gonna add a plane. Hit E or R to scale it up. I'm not sure. One of them. And then we're gonna hit M for the materials. Change the standard thing to matte shadow. Drag that on. And then right click on it. Object properties and see through. Yeah. Don't know what happened to the box. Now if we render that, nothing's happened. But it will eventually. So, <coughs> cancel the render. Let's make sure it's no transparency. Go to lights, photometric, no standard, and skylight. And then car shadows, let's take it off 20 and turn it to 2. Now we have shadows. Yeah, that might be quite a bit grainy, so you might want to increase the samples when you're doing your final render. Let's hide that for the moment so we can see the floor. Okay, shouldn't have done that. Hang on. Let's unhide it. Unhide all. There we go. Um, I I cannot click the button. I'm gonna have to go to perspective. Come on, click, click. Whoa, click, click. There we go. Go to modify. Change it to three. Yeah, what an increase. 